you know, you really had things to say that I think I know touched my heart. And I love what you said about finding and moving into new spaces. Yeah. I love that phrase. So um, who's got a question for Bobby? Yes. Bobby? All right, here we go. All Young right. lady right here. Man, who's going to be here soon. Talk so everybody can. Bobby, first of all, it was just, I, as long as I've known you, that's something, some of the things I've learned tonight just been so revealing and so oh. wonderful. And I want to thank you for being so honest and transparent with all of us tonight. I have many questions for you. As long as I've known you, but I still have all these new questions. Um, one of the ones How about the four dollars I gave you for I gas mean, back I in '96? I haven't gotten back. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Wow! Wow! Really? But, but, oh, but one of the things I mean, I have so many questions, but I want to share with everybody. But you're so such, not just a dear friend, but you're such an interesting person. How in the world did you get these? Interviews. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never understood you. These are top tier, type, you know, uh, elite interview right. celebrities, sports stars, uh, movie stars, producers, directors. So, how do you, with your humble beginnings from Bridgeport, and you weren't part of CBS, NBC, and all of that? How in the world did you get through, and what did you say that made the difference? With everybody. I would go to a lot of games, and you see athletes. Like, um, when I got Snoop, you know, Snoop had been arrested a couple of times, and we was waiting for the elevator, and you got to use what you got. And I said, Snoop, I'm a cop with a sports radio show. I know you ain't never had a cop talk to you and not put handcuffs on you. <laughs> and he cracked up. He cracked up. Um, I read a lot of books, and I push that a lot with kids. Um, read, read, read. Uh, some of these books, like I put the reviews on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, um, they will give you the person. They'll sometimes try to give you the author. I don't want the author. I want the stars. And I get them. It's, it's just there is no rhyme or reason. It's whatever is in front of you. Oscar Robertson was a great story. Just whatever is in front of you, I use. I'm not... My parents are gone. I started, I've been shot, I've been through death threats. I'm not afraid to walk up to some superstar and say, I'd like to talk to you. And most people, a lot of people are. Go ahead. But usually they have an entourage. Usually they have publicists, they have people all around them. So how do you, how do you bust through that bubble of people? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The voice helps. Yeah. The voice helps because just like the lady, every time I do that, you know, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And when I let my voice go, I see everybody jump. So I use that a lot. I use it a lot. And um, I sound like a cop. Excuse me? You know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, in certain set settings, it depends who it is. Now, that does not work with, with females. I got along great with Layla Ali, and um, couldn't I couldn't do that with her. Her her and Jackie Frazier, Joe Frazier thought I was tight with Joe Frazier. I never let him know I was an Ali man because he was punching me too much, um, <laughs> and it, that hurt. Um, but the women, they were the nastiest. I've been to all of these fights. I have never seen a press conference with two fighters. That's when they were getting ready to fight Layla and Jackie Frazier. These two women were the nastiest, most violent verbally with each other. And you know what it stemmed from? Their fathers. Because I'm like four rows away. Ali was not there. Jackie Frazier's father, Joe, was there. And she goes, well, at least my daddy loves me. He's here. She went to the female daddy line. Excuse my mouth. Layla said, bitch, who do you think you're talking? It, it was now a female thing, and they were just, there was such venom. It had nothing to do with fighting now. It had nothing to do with boxing. These were two daughters defending their father's names. It was nasty. It was hot. It was deep. Um, so, yes. Question over here. Your neighbor. And Thurston, you've gotten so big, man. <laughs> wow. So this was great tonight. Oh, I think it's so good to see you, Bobby and I. Um, 
we're friends and neighbors in our teens. Right. And it's wonderful to see that you stayed true to your wonderful self all oh, these thank years. You. Yeah. So um, I'd like to hear how you got the radio show to begin with. How did that happen? A lady lied. A lady who was second in charge, and everybody hated her because she was tough. She was very tough, very abrupt, very kind of nasty. And I found that out being there. Um, but Bridgeport had the big guy, LaBarca, who was up for the Marconi Award. He was a superstar. He had what we thought was an agent. And we talked to him. That guy told me in a restaurant, he said, we were walking out after our first meeting with him, and he goes, you know, um, guys, I'm going to see what I can do to get you on the radio. He said, but Bobby, I don't think your voice is made for radio. And I'm like, what is this again? I may not know how to be a radio person, but I know I got a voice on me. And this is what this guy said. So he took like two, two and a half months. And he called and said, I, I couldn't get you in the door. I don't know why I couldn't get you in the door, blah, blah, blah. So I showed up. And... And goes, well, you're gonna need you're gonna need sponsors. I had a laminated sheet and all these sponsors. She goes, Well, you're gonna need a format. And I said, I am the format. And I hit her with that. It was a third thing, it was all laminated, it was all done. Right in front of me, she calls the boss, the main boss, and she goes, Yeah, I got this guy. I've known him for a long time. He's great. He would be perfect on the radio. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, no, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I want him to get a start. Yeah. No, no, no. Soon as possible. No, he's that good. You know, I've, I've heard him. He's that. She's lying. She's known me for about four to six minutes. And she's lying. So she goes, okay, all right, thank you. And she hangs up. And she goes, the best I could do, I got you a 12-week trial period. Now, you know nothing works in 12 weeks. And that was one day a week. And I turned that one day a week into two decades. And, yeah, it was, it was different. I got to tell you, we're in that world right now. It was different. That station is one of the oldest, strongest stations in the state. They had never had a voice of color. Still haven't since I left. But they had never had anybody. That first year, there was nights that when I left the show, I felt like I was in a heavyweight fight. Because there were racists coming out of the woodwork. They had never heard a person of color, especially one who was opinionated, especially one who was a cop. And they didn't have to wear a mask or a sheet because they were on the radio. Nobody knows your name, where you live, or nothing. So they were saying, the one night I did lose it, I really did. It was Father's Day. And me and my partner at the time, I said, let's open up with a story about our fathers. So he went first, and I went second. And the first guy called in, and I look at my cousin, because my father was a godfather. He goes, Bobby, nobody gives a damn about your dead father. It pissed me off, because I couldn't get to this guy. I didn't know who he was. Yeah, um, but with, within that year, after that year, a lady called in. She lived off East Main Street, the white lady. And she was a devout racist. It was obvious she would say stuff. You knew who she was. I remember the first time she goes, go, Bobby, who were you with this what's up stuff? Go back where you came from. Well, a year later, she's sending birthday cards to my son. She's calling me when her husband was in the hospital very sickly. She asked me to visit him. We became the best of friends for decades. Wow. But it was just getting people to get used to each other and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, you said it. You said you show respect to people. And that's how, as a cop, you were able to be in those tough situations. Yeah. And I think... It's pretty obvious tonight that, you know, you you bring that to every situation, everything you, you have done. to. I never I never tased anybody. Matter of fact, I was the only cop. I think they wanted me to get shot. But I it was it was mandated that every cop had to have a taser. Except for me. 
I never had one. And guys used to tease me. How come they don't say something to you? I said, because they want me to get shot. They don't care. Um, so, but I, <laughs> I never used my nightstick. I never tased anybody. Um, I was going to outthink you. I was going to talk circles around you. And I was going to think circles around you. That's what I did. Um, so that answers that. Well, oh, okay. We'll take one more question. So it's either this lady or you, sir. Let's take two. I'll be quick. Let, let's take All two. Right. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? What's up, Q? Oh, great job. Thank you, man. Thank you. Please refresh my Thanks memory. Thanks for loaning me your jacket. Yes. I appreciate it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Please refresh my memory on this one. What was that question you asked LeBron James and Dwayne Wade ah. when they were playing for Miami oh. in that press conference that went like nationwide? Who's that Bobby I Ramos? I trended number one on Twitter Mad for Dawson. three days. Who's that Bobby Ramos? So remind me again, what was that question? Because that was like all over. All over the country. First of all, I was a Miami Heat fan. And Miami had lost. They were playing the Spurs. And first of all, Spolster, the coach of Miami, comes out. And I'm a smart ass, mom. And I said, um, listen, you guys, this is your third NBA Finals. You guys were down by 20 points in the first quarter. Obviously, you got problems. And he goes, clearly. And he just walked off. Okay, whatever. So then LeBron and Wade always came out together. And I said, what's the problem? I said, you guys, your team, you score 100 points every game. In these three, four games, you haven't scored 100 points yet. You have a great defense. You've given up 100 points every game. What's the problem? Your lackluster defense or your lackluster offense. Now, this is not a sports center. This is split screen. LeBron and Wade here. And me here. <laughs> and their 21 seconds of silence is what made that go viral. And you, it came over the air. LeBron goes under his hand. I don't know what to say. You answer that. <laughs> it came over. So all they had to do was say something simple. And finally, Wade did. Oh, well, we have some problems. We have some things to work out. But that 21 seconds of silence made it go viral. I didn't know what was going on. Stephen A. Smith, yeah, that's another story for another day, um, wouldn't speak. And I knew when I left, something was going on. When I go next day to practice, you know, everybody's looking at me. There's like 200 reporters there, and they look whispering. You can tell what's going on. But I'm at the, rare, I'm at the, well, let me tell you first. I was staying at my cousin's house in Miami, and my phone had been blowing up at 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay, Whatever. I get to, um, I was at Jeff's house, and my cousin calls me at, at my house, said, Bobby, what's going on with you? Your chief has been calling you, trying to get a hold of you, and they just talked about you on Good Morning America. <laughs> they crashed my website in 42 minutes. All these people hit it. They pulled my pictures. They didn't believe, because I wasn't with ESPN. I was from Connecticut. They didn't believe I was a cop. They didn't believe I was a hostage negotiator. So I called the chief. He goes, Bobby, what the hell are you doing? I said, Chief, I'm covering the game. He goes, we got so many calls. It shut down our 911 for 38 minutes oh my last God. night. Wow. That's the way it was. I go to the gas station, and there's three guys. Go, hey, hey, hey. You're the cop last night with the question. <laughs> hey, fellas, how you doing? Okay. I go inside, there's like four more guys. Hey, 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 the question, I, that ponytail, that's him, that's him, he got the ponytail. <laughs> now I realize, I don't know who lost money on the game, who has psychological problems, who has a drug problem in there, ticked off. My cousin Jeff calls me that next morning, all upset. And he goes, cuz, I'm going to the airport, I'm in the limo, and I got ESPN on. I did 21 radio shows in three days, by the way, after that. He goes, on ESPN radio, they're talking about, this guy's a cop, we got to be careful. We got to take him out, though. But he's a SWAT guy, we got to be careful with him. <laughs> and my cousin was like, they're crazy. What are you going to do? I said, I'm not worried about them. They're just guys trying to get ratings. But I was worried about what nutcase is walking around. Who lost two hundred dollars and he's blaming me for that? I was never so happy to get back to Hartford um, 
But yeah, it was all... And then Jimmy Kimmel mentioned me in his monologue. Will Smith tweeted about me. So it was like everywhere. And I'm not a wallflower, but I didn't go with the ankle gun. And I was concerned being there. That's why I couldn't wait to get back to Hartford. I'm sorry that was a long answer, but I had to tell you that. Okay. One last question. This... Go ahead. Yes. Hello, Lamont. Hello, my darling. <laughs> I just wanted to say more. There's going to be a little bit of a question, but I just want to say first, thank you, because I'm a product of Robert Ramos. <laughs> that uh, uh, I, I was a sweetheart. <laughs> I was a sweetheart. But he had to talk to me a few times, uh, almost every day. Out your name. <laughs> out your name. <laughs> what the hell? Every yes. day, like, girl, uh, why? Uh, and I'm like, okay. And it's funny when you live in a world that only but so few people can calm the beast in you. Yes. Uh -huh. When you're going through and you're, and you're being attacked most of your life, and you go back to attack these people, and he's like, no, that's not the right way to be. Mm -hmm. You still got to love these people. And not only through my generation, my son right here is 22. He did it for him, too. He's 22 now? He's 22 now. And that's how Boy, I got drawers older than you. I'm wearing a pair tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. I just want to say I thank him because if it wasn't for him in our lives, you don't know where you would be. And if he's you. touched so many people's lives, I remember my son was a little bit, and I think my picture, the picture's still on Facebook, my son put it up there, where he had him, I don't know, it was he was being honored, and he had my son speak for him. And my oh, son yeah. would pull at the Ramada. At the Ramada oh, yeah. in Stratford. And I would always say, thank you for thinking about my son. Thank you for thinking about this young man that everybody had given up on. He has never given up on Thursday. And I'm proud to say that it takes good men like him in the world. And even Ted Meekins, I've known all these young men growing up, even though I'm getting up there. But um, <laughs> yes, you, you are. Know, oh, <laughs> it just feels good to see these people that still care about us. In spite of whatever you go through, they don't look at you as the bad seed. They say, you know, what can I do to help you? Mm -hmm. So I thank you. And my That's question perfect. is, now that you're out of the, out of the limelight, who I ain't never out of limelight. I was, saying, I, <laughs> I was born to stand out. I ain't never out of limelight. Okay. Go ahead. Well, Sherry back, says she's taking me for a ride somewhere. All right. So we'll, we'll see. We'll be coming back to Stratford and hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do some things. <laughs> What's your question? Yes. What was your question? When are you coming back to Stratford to do some things for us? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Stratford. Where? We've got to wrap this up, but Bobby, okay. one, of our, um, one of our audience members just said that um, you have to come back as one of our authors for our author series when you write that I book. So everybody, okay, when he writes the book, we're going to have him again. Bobby, thank you so much for being with us tonight, and thank you all for being with us. Good thank night. you very much, everybody. I appreciate you coming out. Check out the website. Tell your friends to come check me out next time. <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Uh, you with the state? Uh, Steve Davis. My name is Steve Davis. <laughs> Thank you very much.